Hello everyone, welcome to the shop. The other day I got a request to do a video on the different drive methods for chainsaws. So uh, I've got a couple different saws set up here. We have the Lancaster 40 IL in front of us and a couple other parts that uh, I happen to have had taken apart from other saws that I can use for illustration. And to begin, I'll describe the clutch on 99% of the saws that you're going to encounter. And that kind of clutch is a centrifugal clutch, which we have right here. This is the clutch drum. And this particular drum has the sprocket to drive the chain on it. And riding inside the clutch drum is the clutch carrier, which is the center part, and then the clutch shoes, which is on the carrier. And you'll notice there are these springs that go around that pull the shoes in towards the carrier. And this is freewheeling on a bearing. And this is connected to the engine. So when the engine's spinning, this carrier is spinning. And at an idle, there isn't enough centrifugal force pulling these clutch shoes away to allow them to engage the clutch drum. It's all friction related. Uh, there's no gear teeth or anything like that. It's just, just like on a car, except cars don't have centrifugal clutches, but it's just friction that will allow the clutch shoes to grab the clutch drum. But then when you rev up the saw, these clutch shoes will fly outward and grab the clutch drum and spin the uh, clutch drum and thus driving the chain. Here's a slightly different version of the same thing. This is off my Reed Prentice. Here's the clutch carrier and clutches. You can, if you're familiar with um, rear brakes on a car, this sort of looks like a uh, uh, brake shoes. And then there's the clutch drum. Same thing, when this spins, gets spun up by the engine, these springs will stretch and the clutch shoes will engage the drum. Now on a direct drive saw, this Lancaster 40 IL is a direct drive, the engine is directly connected to the chain. You can see that the sprocket seems to be right about centered with where the crankshaft would be on the engine. So this is a direct drive allows uh, very high chain speeds and uh, pretty simple. That's that. That's a direct drive. Now, a gear drive like my Sears U4G the G stands for gear gear drive. You see we have this unusual, unusual large housing here. If you look at it from the side, the cylinder is there. Right about there is where the crankshaft is, but the drive sprocket is right about over there. As you can see, there's the drive sprocket. So what's inside there is a clutch, centrifugal clutch, but and on the and a clutch drum too, but instead of this chain sprocket on the clutch drum, there is a gear, like here. Here's the clutch drum, and there's a gear. And that gear drives the output gear, and you can see small and big circle. You see the resemblance, a small and a big circle. So it's a gear reduction. This gear has to rotate many times to make this gear rotate once. This is off my Reed Prentice. Obviously it's you know much larger than the Sears U4G. But it's the same same thing, gear driven. 
And because it's gear driven, or if this is rotating counterclockwise, this rotates clockwise. So the engine has to spin the opposite direction to make the chain go in the same direction compared to a direct drive saw. Next is one of my favorite saws. Home Light 26 LCS. You can see all it has a seems to have some sort of housing here. You might think it's a gear drive. Unfortunately, I, have, I haven't gotten around to taking the cover off either of my 26 LCSs, but inside here there will also be a clutch, a centrical clutch and clutch drum, but there will not, it's not direct drive and it's not gear drive, it's belt drive, surprisingly, it has a cogged belt, like uh, what you have for your timing belt for your car. So there's a small belt that goes around there, a large sprocket here, and a small sprocket there, and that provides the speed reduction. So in this case, is belt driven, not gear driven, the engine turns in the same direction the output turns to make the chain go in the proper direction. So that covers it, dumb and simple. One last, one last drive method it's going to be a little dark because I can't really bring, drag this thing around one, one handed, one man. We have my uh, Lombard GS two man chainsaw. And this has a manual clutch as opposed to, see here's the clutch lever. The manual clutch as opposed to centrifugal, I don't know how it works, I haven't taken it apart. But in order to fell a tree, the bar has to be rotated flat to cut a a wedge in a tree, and then it has to be rotated up and down to cut a tree into sections. So this can rotate. Unfortunately it's stuck so I can't show you. But uh, in order for it to rotate, the shaft that drives the bar and chain has to go this way. So the flywheel on the engine goes around this way and the crankshaft is going this way forward and back. And inside this gearbox here is a bevel gear. I don't have any examples of a bevel gear, but you can Google it and you'll find out what they look like. Basically, it, there's a gear on the end of the shaft here that allows another shaft to be perpendicular to it. And because because of the bevel gear, you can rotate this head around the shaft and it'll still stay engaged. So it's a gear drive as well and I assume it's it's a gear reduction drive as well. Uh, most of these old two-man saws had pretty slow chain speeds. So in the bevel gear you could also have a, a small bevel gear and a large one to create a speed reduction. And that's it. Those are your several basic different types of drive methods for your chainsaws. Belt drive, gear drive, direct drive, wherever I put that. Oh, there it is. Direct drive. Most saws are direct drive, especially all the new ones. All the new ones are direct drive. Both of my, my modern saws are direct drive. You don't see any gearboxes on those. McCulloch direct drive. And again, centrifugal clutch, very, very basic. There's a they uh they all can look pretty different. This is off a home light zip. This is off the uh Reed Prentice. I don't have any other clutches apart, but uh they all look a little different, but they all do this same basic thing. Once you spin them up, the clutch shoes fly out and grab the clutch drum and spin the clutch drum. So that's it. I hope that answers your question. If anybody else has any other questions that I can illustrate for them, I'd be more than happy to make a video for you.
And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And so long for now.